Welcome Virgo to your in-depth monthly horoscope for September 2024 for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. I'm going to share some standout details to look out for to begin with, but please stay with me. Then on screen, your event chart right at the start of the month. That's always hugely influential. And then I'm going to unpack how things unfold as September develops both in terms of influences and exact timing for your sign. Now your ruler Mercury starts this month in a sheltered location, the 12th house, but also in an electric link to Uranus. So the first week could see you a little bit on edge. And if there is something that's a bit out of kilter, it may be hard to disguise it. But also as we come into this month, Mars, the planet of passion and power, remains high in the sky in your chart. But if there's a professional relationship that's not working so well, you could be unsure of how things are going to evolve. The third, however, sees the annual new moon in your sign. This is your chance to showcase what makes you special over the next month. It's augmented on the fourth by Mars hustling and bustling into your 11th house, your sector of connections and long-term plans. He's going to be there for an extended eight weeks, really exciting. And on the ninth, Mercury returns to your sign, emerges from the post-retrograde shadow on the 11th. Both things truly to be celebrated. But the 18th does see a new eclipse series begin in your opposite sign of Pisces, which is very dreamy and drifting, but it's essentially for you about relationships. You could feel a little bit uncertain about where someone's coming from, certainly getting some mixed signals. So I need to explore that with you. There is a great link with Uranus, however, that also threads its way into that eclipse. But by the 22nd, it's all about the money or all about the economy, stupid, as the sun makes its way into Libra. This is also the autonomous equinox. We're going to see a lot of energy at the end of this month in terms of your self-worth, your values, but also your income. So lots to share with you. I'm astrologer Patrick Arundel. If you're new to my channel, this is very much a community. If you have any thoughts, please feel very welcome to share them. Return Investor, as always, I truly appreciate all your support. If you've yet to sub, please do so now. Click the uh, bell notification symbol and please help the channel to thrive. If you'd like to have a consult consultation with me, uh, please see the testimonials below of what other people have found working closely with me. And also, if you'd like to take advantage of my unique special offer, you can order your year 2025 personal transit forecast now. Get the rest of this year free, 30% off, but also my life roadmap report. This will give you serious insights into the patterns that have played out in your life so far, but also much greater insights how to work with those energies future forwards. Please see below for more. So Virgo, as you come into this month, the sun is still in your sign. It's just in your first decan, still the first 10 degrees. So therefore, uh, communication is going to be a big part of this month's story. But having your ruler trapped in the 12th house can be complex. It's also in uh, quite a, an electric right angle with Uranus. So Uranus is in the part of your chart to do with freedom. If you do feel penned in, in any part of your situation, whether it's emotionally, financially, a job, a relationship, think of the Eight of Swords in, a, in, in the tarot, where we feel that we don't have many options. There could be a sense of that, but you could also look at this energy in a fresh light by understanding that actually Mars and Jupiter have been giving you a big push to try to be more in charge of your personal destiny over recent weeks. And perhaps part of your frustration could be that you're not feeling quite as seen and heard as you would like. So as you come into this month, Mars's square with Neptune can create a certain downturn in the amount of self-belief or conviction you've got to succeed around key goals. Now, I feel that 
Pluto returning to the sign of Capricorn on the 1st, inverting back into the sign for one final visit through to the 19th of November, is just reminding you that you do have a lot of talent. What Pluto's been doing since the 21st of January is making you aware of where you're very conscientious, committed, provide services, but that can sometimes starve you of giving your personal qualities the oxygen to really thrive. So Pluto can be good for you in a way through to the 19th of November, but I feel that if Mars and Neptune square at the start of this month does feel you see you feeling a little deflated, just be aware that once you have the new moon in your sign on the 3rd, that's a glittering opportunity to reset your uh, your posture. So if you want to be more assertive, if you want to get on the front foot, that new moon can help. Also, it's great if you want to give yourself some kind of fresh makeover. But the fourth augments that new moon brilliantly because Mars moves into a much more collaborative part of your chart. It's going to be there for eight long weeks. So Mars moving into that area through to the 4th of November suggests your alliances with others are going to be very important. Then on the 9th, Mercury rejoins you. Something that's been blocked, that perhaps has had to be adapted, that's caused a huge amount of frustration, can by the 11th start to gain traction. But just be aware that through the second week of this month, the sun goes goes face to face with Saturn. And as much as you may want to invest in what makes you personally happy and motivated, the new moon and Mars in the 11th house, someone you need to interact with could uh, prove to be quite a challenge. Maybe they're not very impressed with what you want to do. Maybe they're going to challenge you in some ways. You could meet some opposition, but I feel that Mercury and Mercury Mercury returning to your sign and Mercury ending its post-retrograde shadow does bring you into the moment in a very quick, uh, mindful way, which will be helpful. Now, in week three, we have a fantastic link between the sun in your sign and Uranus. If you recall, through the spring months, there was a particular phase of the year when you were really being pushed and almost provoked to be much more daring in your approach and to escape anything that was really limiting you. So if the, that feeling that you have or may have at the start of this month with Mars squaring with Neptune and your ruler squaring with Uranus, if you're still feeling that, what I feel is going to happen uh, is that the Sun's angle to Uranus can just push you to remind you that sometimes we have to let go of something that we're comfortable with in order to receive something that's that much more exciting. But if you are experiencing some confusion around relationships or a particular involvement, that could be a factor over the following six months because of the lunar eclipse on the 18th, a new series in the sign of Pisces. That's your sector of relating. Since 2012, Neptune's brought some magic to that area, but perhaps also some dissolution and disappointment. Saturn over the last 16 months, perhaps more demands from people that you're interacting with. But on the 22nd, the Sun makes its way into the sign of Libra. And this is very much about uh, being in touch with your values, pursuing over the following 13 weeks anything that can reinforce the foundations of your life. Also, there's a great link with the Sun and Pluto just before the equinox, which could see you evolve, take a giant step forwards in a way which could surprise you. It may be deep within you, or it could be in your physical world. But on the 23rd, Venus, the planet of relating, but also money, moves into your third house. Now, Venus has been blessing you, potentially with some extra resources, but it may have also made you a bit more tempted uh, by calorific goodies. Moving into your third house, it's much more about quick interactions. And certainly, if you want to relate to someone or meet someone new, it could be uh, some kind of meet-up, dating event, or online opportunity attracts you to it. But the 26th sees your ruler move out 
of your sign and into uh, Libra. If you are wanting to rethink how you can improve your financial situation, you get a wonderful opportunity towards the end of this month as Mercury and the Sun combine and create a Kazemi. The radiance of the Sun heats up your ruler and helps you to be very quick-witted and potentially show some ingenuity even all the way to something quite radical that can help you get ahead as the month draws to a close. So it's definitely a month when you can manifest your individuality, Virgo. It's going to get easier to do that as the month goes on, but you do need to be mindful of who you're talking to. So whatever ideas you've got, however driven you feel, you've still got to run it past someone, whether it's a boss, a bank manager, a business advisor, an investor or a partner, or a parent in order to get that level of cooperation and collaboration. So a good balance between what you want and how you connect to others is really the secret of this month. Have a great September, all the best and goodbye.